Hey everybody, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And in AI news, talking to basically artificial intelligence versions of your dead relatives is not really going to help you or your mental health. Now, I was actually just thinking about this the other day, which is kind of why I wanted to talk about this. Uh, you know, recently I had, um, you know, basically a familial relative pass and all that. And I was thinking about, well, with artificial intelligence, we might just be able to recreate something. You know, and this is something that has been bandied about. Now, imagine all the words, all the video, all the audio of a loved one being fed into an AI that learned what it thought was your dead loved one and then interacted with you in their voice and their likeness. That's what we're talking about. And we've seen people use chatbots and all of that before, but with the rise of artificial intelligence and the ability to create video at will, which is something OpenAI is now uh, basically about to unleash on the world for good or bad, disinformation <laughs> beware, this is essentially what's being developed. But there are some negative side effects. And so I wanted to just basically talk about what that is, because I did my homework and I went looking at actual studies from mental health publications on this, and this is something that I think is going to be detrimental in the long term. And so constantly interacting with an AI version of a deceased loved one would essentially impede the natural grieving process. It may leave individuals stuck in that state of denial, as in, no, they're not actually dead because they're right in front of me on the screen and I can talk to them and they can talk back. Now, this could also lead to more prolonged grief and other mental health issues as well as somebody eventually realizes, no, this is just a series of algorithms that I'm talking to and not actually my dead mother, father, sister, cousin, whatever. So on top of that, there is a risk that people may basically become overly dependent on this type of technology and therefore start prioritizing interactions with AI versions of basically the deceased ones as opposed to going out and forming new real life relationships. This is the same issue we've got with AI girlfriends and boyfriends. I did uh, basically a video and podcast and radio segment on that a while back and that was on the data mining side. But think about those lonely people that now become dependent and start anthropomorphizing, I guess, the artificial intelligence that is really a real person. I recently saw an interview uh, uh, with a, basically with a guy, I believe he was in Japan or China, that said, I, re I really believe in like another dimension that my AI girlfriend is real. And this is essentially what we're talking about. It could make us delusional. Now, on top of all of this, Another concern by uh, basically raised by researchers when I went looking to compile my notes is the potential formation, uh, potentially, of a religion f basically centered around artificial intelligence. The belief that an AI entity can capture the essence of a deceased person could basically give rise to a new form of spiritualism, which might have profound societal implications because artificial intelligence, unlike, let's say, belief in a deity, is a lot more tangible in the sense that you can interact directly with it. And there are a lot of people out there that think God speaks to me. I am not adjudicating that or judging that. If that's what you believe or, or that's what you really feel, I'm not saying that's false. But with an artificial intelligence, you can press a button. You can get a response. People can review that response as well. And so this could challenge existing religious and philosophical beliefs about life, death, and the afterlife as well, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the dependency on technology continues to get worse. And, and the crux of the debate here is, can a machine trained on simply text, audio, video, pictures, etc., really recreate somebody's emotions, their experiences, and give them moral agency? Can an AI truly capture the essence of of what a person is. I don't think so. And, and, and I think it's going to be an interesting future to watch this unfold. But as artificial intelligence tends to get better over time, and it has gotten vastly better over time, and will continue to do so, we're going to see a rise of this. And by virtue of that, we are going to see people that are potentially stuck in denial because, you know what, grandpa is still alive and talking to me, or my mom or my dad or my kid or, or whatever loss you've had in your life. And I think it's something that we really need to focus on and we really need to pay attention to because as we become more isolated thanks to social media and the rise of the internet, this will isolate us even more. Imagine spending more time interacting with that dead father as opposed to your alive mother. And that's something that I think we need to really be concerned about. And so by virtue of that, I think we're going to have a huge issue. And with technology adoption, uh, especially uh, in older generations like the boomers increasing, this may also increase isolation, which does nobody any good. 
not to mention potential scams and everything else, if somebody creates an AI that basically says, grandpa says, send him $10,000. And I think that's another thing that we have to worry about as well. So I'll leave it at that. But that is your interesting news of the day, and I'd love to have a conversation on it. So please feel free to interact with me on any of my social media platforms or wherever I post this. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please attempt to stay private. Thanks, everybody.